answer came while I was kneeling there in prayer. The answer came, I felt his mighty saving power. Now home in heaven is waiting for me when I cross over the mystic sea. I'm praising the Lord each day that the answer came. I'm praising the Lord each day that the answer came. I'm praising the Lord each day that the answer came. I'm praising the Lord each day that the answer came. Your time with Eva May, funniest or most memorable moment? I was sitting here thinking, I thought, well, I don't know which memory to pull up, but uh, I thought about it. I can remember, I'm going to go back way back when I was a kid and I wasn't even traveling with Eva May. Uh, I went to see the little favorites. I was 11 years old, like I said. <laughs> it was a co-op in LaGrange, Georgia. I'm from down in close to Atlanta. And uh, they had this album. And um, I would play the album. And I would... Um, they had two ladies with them named Barbara. <laughs> and so um, I was only 11. And I thought, okay, the lady owned the New Sounds of Little Feathers is uh, Barbara Daly. But I didn't pay attention to the last name. So she said, Barbara, and they introduced Barbara. So I went home, I thought, it don't sound the same. So I go back home, play my record. But try what Eva May, I'm going back to her. I can remember sitting there, I can still remember that day. The first time I ever got her autograph was that day. I had, I was so nervous. I went up and asked for the sheet music. I loved Child the King. They never sung Child the King. But I went up to her, and she signed her autograph for me that day. And I still have that sheet music. But but traveling even May was a pleasure, and uh, she spoke what she thought. Yeah. (laughs) But uh, there's a lot of things that uh, that I learned from her. And uh, but memories, I I don't know. There's so many that runs through my mind. I can't pick a favorite. Yeah. (laughs) Family memory. I think my favorite memories were we stayed at Center Hill Motel, which turned into, I guess it changed ownership at some point, wasn't a nice place, but we were staying there year after year for the reunions. There would be guitars and singing coming out of every one of those motel rooms, and the doors would be open. It was a one-story hotel, and just everybody was as true as, as they are, and just as they love the Lord and the family sing times, there was harmony coming out of every room, and uh, that's just precious memories for me. Yeah, that's great. You've recorded as a group here what's called Lefevre Reunion 2012 now how did y'all get together was this a three day thing a year thing or how did y'all get together to put this together well, last year <laughs> we came we did a little rehearsing with, with Ron and Rick and, and Michelle Davis and I and came and, and you heard us we sang last year but Rick and, and I started working and then we recruited uh, Mark and, and Ron's, you know, he's just our sidekick, so he's there. We came together this year. We decided this will be fun. Let's record this. So I have a friend who has a recording studio that came over. We rehearsed about four hours. Sounds like we rehearsed about four. No, it's really pretty good. And uh, the next morning we sang at our church and we recorded it live. And we're going to be doing some more recording, and, and we want to do a few dates next year. We've just got to get our schedules together. So, Randall, you need to get us up there in French Lick, somewhere close to. by. We'd and we'll come up. Maybe we can work it out where we can do a promotion, have the LaFever Quartet and the reunion. That would work. And and do a, do a weekend Barbara's up there. Barbara's always the promoter, isn't she? Yes, she, she is. is. She promoter is. first. Things get done with Barbara, without a doubt. Now, as we close out this interview, if you can kind of aggregate, what do you think maybe what lasting legacy that the Lefevers maybe have put into gospel music of today, what maybe the Lefevers may have uh, changed something, you know, what legacy do you think the Lefevers have left behind still today in the world of gospel music? You know what? I believe, if I'm not wrong, they were either the first or one of the first to bring out all the instruments on the stage. We're talking about horns, guitars, steel guitar, when everybody else was just using piano and they were amazing because it seemed like somebody could change instruments and just play everything you wanted they could play it and so that was pretty awesome that is that is a legacy in itself and of course Mylon Lefevre wrote the song without him that will forever be uh, everybody will remember that and there's quite a story behind that song too Pierce so, did quite a bit of the arranging and Pierce was a good arranger and, and he could nobody could play that trumpet 
like Pierce LeFevre. But they were just very, very instrumental. I mean, they could play anything. And, and what and you know one of my favorite things is when they used to do 20 key, 20 fingers on the keyboard and they was it they played joy bells mm-hmm, joy bells and they would trade ends and switch back and forth on the keyboard I'm surprised they didn't knock each other off the bench now but, didn't they also have their own publishing company yes, sing music one of the first Le- groups Le- to Le- do Fever that sing and they had when I first got to Atlanta when I flew in there and I got to tour everything uh, those Le- four those are four I got yep. yeah Lefebvre Le- 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 sound Le- that's where we recorded. But they took me there. Your eyes took me first to their house and then to the studio to show me around. And, of course, there was Pierce Lefebvre. And he wasn't singing with them then, and Maurice. And so I got to got acquainted with the Lefevres right away in a big, beautiful recording studio. And then to their home. And uh, I lived in the green room when I was there. But then I, I moved later and lived with the secretary. But there, there's a lot of legacy there. Um, of God's love, and when I think of God's love, it all make go to Uncle Al because no one loved Eva May, loved Urias, loved every one of them, but there's no one like Uncle Al. I think all everybody here will agree with that. He's he was a true soldier of the Lord of the Cross, Uncle Al. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Barbara. You are so welcome. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, my friend. And thank you, Ron. Thank you, sir. They are known as Lefebvre Reunion. Look for them in your town for the Lefebvre Reunion concert. And this is Randall Hamm with a very special Artist Spotlight segment on the Sunday Morning Gospel Show. <laughs>